Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I'll be your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, panelists Ian Hink. What up? Ben Moore. What up? And my award-winning co-moderator, Daniel Bloodworth. What up with the award? What? What'd you win? You gave, we gave out some awards at the end of the year. But I mean, you know, you know, you never know. You might have something. You did a lot of paper writing. You never got any literary recognition. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I won an awards in school for things. <laughs> Boom, there the, you go. The awards okay. plural. <laughs> Episode 250, <laughs> gents. Congrats. Woo! Distinguished guests, we are here to discuss some of the biggest headlines in video games this week. But before we do that and celebrate our 250th episode, we have to answer for all of the mistakes we made last week. Daniel Bloodworth, begin corrections music, please. Boop. Indiana oh. Jones and the Staff of Kings was released on the Wii, PS2, and PSP. I assume that was a game that did not happen. Most likely because I never played it, but it was a game. They came out on those consoles. I think um, it was supposed to come out on the other consoles too, the HD systems. But ah. The real consoles? Somehow didn't. Apparently the PSP is the best version of that. Who knows? Um, somebody is actually turning Bloodborne into a PS1 game. <laughs> that was like whenever we talked about PS1 demakes, and that was one on my list. And I, I saw guess that. Guess it's happening it was... almost like immediately after I said it. Uh, the first game to use the Konami code was Gradius in 1986. Oh. Uh, nice. Indiana Jones 5 is currently scheduled for 2022. They had their investors meeting and they talked about it, their investors showcase. Uh, it's being directed by James Mangold, who directed Logan and Ford v. Ferrari, uh, which, oh. yeah, yeah, good reviews from both of those. I've only seen one of them. And George Lucas apparently will not be involved in any official capacity. Maybe he's assigned as executive producer, but, um, which, it's like, I don't know. I'm still going to be skeptical. You can say he's not even letting the building, and I'm like, I'll still be curious. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds Correction of a Correction, uh, which I usually don't allow, but it's Star Wars related, was not limited to Empire Rebellion content at launch, which I attempted to correct. The tutorial starred Chewbacca's father, Atichikatuk, building an army to drive the Trade Federation off a Wookiee colony world with the help of Qui-Gon Jinn. And there were campaigns for both the Trade Federation and the Gungans set during the invasion of Naboo. The expansion Clone Campaigns the next year then added Confederacy and Republic stories set during the Clone Wars. And we're done. Um, you didn't know that? Uh, ben, the song is called Bakai Bakamitai. I've Ooh. been a fool. Dame, nane, Dame Dane is the first line of the chorus. It's typically what usually you know people usually call it. Uh, it's like Bob O'Reilly versus uh, Teenage Wasteland. Uh, Sony mysteriously removed the release windows from the CES trailer of the weekend. Those release dates were oh, fawning over. Okay. They released another video later, and that was not included. Uh, and a uh, fun update, Ian uh, Garrett Zamora says, In a game I submitted for the Love and Respect episode over the holidays of naming the game from the song titles that appeared in my top songs of 2020, Ian mentioned Jessica Curry, and I knew I'd heard him talk about her before, so I looked up her stuff, absolutely love it. Her music has become part of my nightly unwinding slash meditation routine, so just wanted to say thanks to Ian for shouting her out. End corrections music, please. Nice. Doop. She's Feels my good. fave. Feels good. Let's keep the good vibes going with the silver lining, a silver lining about us. You know, a lot of these are good things about the industry, and I'm not saying good things didn't happen in the industry. that are more important than easy allies, but John Leitner would like to shout us out just a little bit collectively, but mostly pointing at Ben. The easy allies do their part to protect old spoilers. In what can only be called an uncanny timing, Ben brought up the ending of Half-Life 2 Episode 2, not specifics regarding it, just referencing the ending. At the same time, I was replaying through all of Half-Life, and my wife was experiencing the games for the first time while watching me. This was all in preparation for playing through Half-Life Alex, which unfortunately I was spoiled on regarding the ending. We were about halfway through Half-Life 2 when watching the podcast from last week. As soon as Ben mentioned Half-Life during a segment about helpless endings, my heart sank. Thankfully... Ben showed restraint for a 13-plus-year-old game and chose to stay his words. Not only that, but three other allies, Jones Blood and Brad, all chose to keep quiet and not talk specifics. Thank you for Yeah, Blood thought I spoiled something, but I didn't spoil anything. Thank you to everyone. Well, that see, was a different conversation, but it's, yeah. It's, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always I should your, say um, yeah. in Game of the Year, because we talk a lot about Half-Life Alex in Game of the Year, yeah. if you uh, don't yeah. want... Half-Life Alex spoilers. For everything for, for Last of Us. For yeah, me, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, if you're curious about 2020 spoilers, stay the hell away from our deliberations. Not our awards video, but our deliberations. Yeah. And I if feel you, like we did all right. We did I, okay. I, we, I mean, we, we didn't either, get specific Yeah, we either did like it or anything. we didn't. I mean, there's some big ones. Like Last of Us, there's a biggie in there. But like, uh, we, we had to talk about it. Best character, best yeah, narrative. Yeah, yeah. You know the categories. Yeah. 
yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you want to stay there's, away there's, from those um and, your mileage uh, may vary but uh yeah. be mindful of that for sure Thank you to everyone for showing restraint for a game over a decade old, because you never know who's experiencing it for the first time right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John, for that silver lining. I really am trying to think of a joke game to spoil as a joke right now, and I just can't even bring myself to do it. Yeah. I want to, I want to like spoil Game of Thrones or like the end of Tomb Raider or something, but know. I just can't. <laughs> yeah, Tomb I can't one. bring myself to do it. A T Rex, good moment, but it's right away. Well, and uh, now you've done it. Yeah, you know. Look out! Look out when you get into that cave in the original Tomb Raider. There's a T. Ooh, well, the, the, whole, the whole thing is kind of a cave, but yes, it's I know. What you mean. <laughs> There's lots of darkness. <laughs> yeah. There's a ceiling in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't mind at all talking about Resident Evil at the top of this podcast, scheduled ah. just so beautifully right before we talk about it. I, I, I'm nervous when there's like a bunch Boy. of games that get announced right before a podcast, because I got to figure out, like, what do we talk about first? What are the details behind all these things? But mm, I watched it. I rewatched it. I talked to my fellow allies about it. I read the email. The press release, got a list of characters here, and I managed to play a little bit of the demo, about 15 minutes of the <laughs> visual demo. That Wait, that's like, visual that's like how long it is, like though. Whole, yeah, I beat the demo two and a half times. I got to the living room. <laughs> okay. I, know, I got to the living room, and all the doors were locked, and I was like, ah, I got 10 minutes left. I should probably Brandon, go. Brandon. my hair I have, get ready for this podcast. I've had one of the most frustrating afternoons that I've had in a long time. Let's talk about this demo. Shadow well, dropped right after. <laughs> broke, yeah. broke the PlayStation <laughs> Store. What's fun? And it broke your PS5, apparently? Yeah, well, I've been having, like, weird problems with certain games on my PS5. Like, Demon Souls crashed. Miles Morales, like, wouldn't work and still doesn't work yeah. unless I put it on performance mode. And I downloaded Whoa. Resident Evil 8, and it just kept freezing repeatedly. Just wouldn't stop. And I tried, I went through like all their troubleshooting and I tried every single step and then I got on the phone with Sony and I went through it with a representative Whoa! and wow. this, this, this took like 30 minutes and then they're like, yeah, you know, we'll send you a box and we'll get it repaired and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, like, you know, not ideal, but like at least it's getting fixed. Then I said to my wife, I was like, here, I'll show you what's happening with this Resident Evil 8 demo that I've been trying to get working for hours. And she sat down and it just worked. Psst, the wife is watching. She's watching. And I, I don't. I feel like some sort of like divine trolling is happening. Oh yeah. I, I don't know what's going on, but it worked, and I was able to play through it once, yeah. and so I'm grateful for that. But <laughs> it's like, I was gonna ask if you had any secret details. Like I love it, like the Sony rep was just like, and we'll send that one out to you right away. Okay, okay. Wesker's baby, click. And you're like, wait, what? So, what? <laughs> what? What? What, did you, what was that last part? <laughs> what did yeah. you say? I feel like that often is the way it goes. Though it's like. You, you can beat your head trying to troubleshoot something for hours and not know yeah. what's going on. doesn't make any sense. The minute you tell somebody about it, it's fixed. Yeah. But, yep. yeah, it, it was like it was like magic. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what variable changed there to get it to work. Like, it, I'd be curious did, after the podcast to try to play through it again and see if... Right. Yeah. Did I you would like, definitely still send it in like if you've had repeated down problems. Down yeah. 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 What's up? Did you like power it down or something? Oh, I did a lot of things. I rebuilt the database. I reset Ugh. it to factory settings and deleted everything Ugh. on my system. Oh my god! Uh, I, <sighs> you know, I did I did everything. Yeah, because my Demon Souls and Miles Morales both crashed a few times while I was playing those, and uh, this one I had no problems at all. So the protagonist the of this demo just slightly under more duress than you were this afternoon, Ben. Yeah. Well, the thing that's weird is I had a I had a disc I had a Miles Morales in my PS5, and I took that out and it froze again. But then I shut everything down and booted. It. Like maybe there's something wrong with my disc drive that's affected my PS5. None of this is making any sense to me. So I don't. I have a I don't digital version. Is. And I don't you're still having version. problems, yeah. And yeah, demons and miles would both crash. So I don't know. Peep, I was reading that like don't put it into rest mode because that can cause problems. So I, now I'm just a theory I, for a while, but I don't know if I buy it. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I put mine in rest uh, mode. I, I do buy time. it. I do buy it because Omar and I both. We're experiencing crazy problems, especially me with Demon Souls. When I would boot it up out of rest mode, it would be super laggy and choppy. Mm. Ever since then, I've been putting it in just off. Yeah, and I, it hasn't crashed since. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see if that fixes anything. It could be yeah. a, like a combination of things to where like yeah. right. rest mode basically reveals a problem that otherwise you're not encountering. Uh, well, Ben, right. why why didn't you just download it on your Xbox Series X? Play it on that. 
Uh, it's PS5 Ooh. exclusive. Oh! <laughs> the demo, you say? This free demo, the visual yes. demo, exclusive to PlayStation 5. That's unfortunate. Not only for Microsoft fans, but for Sony fans that were unable to buy a PlayStation 5. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, you know, Sony showing up and, and investing a lot in this game. Very much looking forward to the visual demo. I just love that it's specifically called. I was like, oh, we're not even going to have an inventory in this thing. And it's like, oh, no, we just don't have weapons. Just call it the non-weapon demo. But, the you know, just to show off the visuals. That's it. No story in this demo. Not showing off anything else. Just the visuals. There's some story. Mm-hmm. What, did you like it? it? It worked a little better for you, Ian. Did you, did oh, you enjoy yeah. it? Oh, yeah. I liked it quite a lot. Um, you have... You started. I don't know how in detail we want to go. I don't but think we. You, yeah, I think you just kind of talk about what it what it informed you about the game, and not like this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Right. So it 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 lets you experience kind of two locations. You start in sort of a dungeon, and then you move into the house, and you see actually that the main house. staircase. That it chandelier. So that's good. all I wanted. They they call it the chandelier mm-hmm. demo. Yeah. It's like that's all I want to see. You <laughs> see the main that room thing. from the. From that we've seen in all the trailers with the banister and the staircase and all that, you actually uh, do that eyeball door puzzle. Oh, uh, that's uh, something that Didn't I expect. I noticed. I don't know if you guys did as well, but um, when you examine the eyeball, like it won't let you rotate it. Like it, it like gets like kind of like wavy. Like it's messing with reality oh, really? or something. Yeah, unless I was doing something wrong, and you totally huh. can. But yeah, it, well it, that. Or it's just your that, PS5 again. It's, yeah, who knows? It could just be a broken PS5. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if that was on purpose because, like, they're known for putting, like, mm-hmm. weird little Easter eggs yeah. in this. I actually it definitely I like played through it a couple of times. You see two entities in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, there are a few pieces where one of the black dress bug vampire ladies, uh, you know, is walking. And I, I did, I ran and caught up with her and... She will attack you there mm-hmm. uh, if oh. you get to her fast enough. She'll say, like, I can't wait to dinner, and then she'll yeah. like, look at you. That happened to me, um, yep. Which usually she doesn't do until later. Um, yeah, and then you see the, the woman in white toward the end of it. Um, it's a good, Lady fun Dimitrescu? little demo. Yeah, Lady Dimitrescu. And you you find out they're, they're like, making wine, mm-hmm. but it's, like, special wine. Yeah. And it's, like... Pretty it's clearly, they're not using the grapes. Yeah, hands sticking out of the cask. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the grapes are all moldy. Like they're not using grapes for this wine. Uh, but yeah, it's it was short. Uh, it it felt like something like you would have played an E3. Like mm. here, you've got 15 minutes. Play this demo, you know. And uh, the first time I went through it, it probably took me 20, 30 minutes. The second time, I think it took me like six because I wasn't scared. <laughs> so I didn't have to like tiptoe through the tulips or whatever. Yeah. I, uh, I'm sure that this is greatly exacerbated by the problems that I had this afternoon, but it was, it was, I guess, slightly shorter than I was expecting. I feel, mm-hmm. I, and I could just totally be misremembering. Uh, I, I felt like dummy, the dummy demo was longer, but I don't, I, I don't fully remember. Um, mm. but I kind of had this weird situation, like you were talking about the second time where like, I would get like halfway through it and it kept crashing. And so like, I knew how oh. to do everything right. well not everything but like the first half of it really fast and uh yeah i was able to get Th- through it that is very quickly. resident evil and there's nothing like yeah. playing through an re game yeah. for the third time and you're just like right right you just grab like, this whoosh. thing and open that thing but uh, it showcases it showcased like you know the classics bolt cutters on a chain yeah. like opening a door with a an eyeball bolt cutter like, introduction examining yeah. a thing oh, yeah. to reveal another thing to reveal mm-hmm. another thing yeah. like getting a key out of a thing like yeah you do you do it all and except it, for shooter block yeah and i i mean like it's hard to overstate how good it looks hdr on yeah like it's terrifying the demo just ray tracing? Of, what's up did the demo have ray tracing i could I, it doesn't it looked specify. like it might it didn't yeah. have reflections yeah. or at least Ask not the, the mirror i looked in yeah, but um, um, there were hey, there were some things in the <laughs> puddles and things a little bit, but um, but yeah, I mean ray tracing isn't just reflections. It could, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Blood, you hopped it. What'd you think? Uh. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed it. Um, the the audio design I really liked. You know, like y- you'd be moving around and trying to find a way forward, and then you just like hear like a thump behind you or footsteps or you know voices and things, and just like oh, okay, what's 
what's going on over there and and sometimes that's kind of the clue that you you need to be like okay you, this is where you know something significant has happened and so this is where your next little piece of the puzzle is but re7 had a ton of that there were so many like whispery voices and footsteps and doors opening and closing and and so it's it, it's gonna be interesting to see there were a lot of like random elements in re7 where you're like i'm not sure where i'm gonna bump into this person this person's just kind of floating around so it's gonna be interesting yeah. literally they're floating around this time it's gonna be like uh oh a moth goes flying by you and you're like is that is that just a regular yeah. bug or is that a, a bug that's going to well, turn into I, a person? What's going on? In the demo, at least, I tried to test that because there's a part where you see the woman in white kind of walk past a, the door that's cracked open slightly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what if I catch up with her? Will she be there and kill me like or something? Yeah. Um, wasn't there. <laughs> she, she was not actually there. So um, in the real game, I wonder because um, you can catch up with the lady in the black dress. So. But Ben, you brought I up an interesting like point. Oh, sorry. Uh, I do feel like it's very similar to Resident Evil 7. Like, it's definitely a lot of the things that they did there continued. But I think I I, I love Resident Evil 7, but I think I'm just even more into the setting here. Mm. Like, just this, this gothic horror, these vampire ladies. Like, I'm really excited for their potential as villains. And I think... Um, I think the molded were fine in Resident Evil 7, but these sorts of of beasts and creatures, I think, could be potentially more interesting and varied than what we got in RE7. Well, and it's, like, already just immediately so steeped in that kind of gothic horror stuff. It's, like, we're already, like, majorly hinting, like, vampires. We're Mm. majorly dealing with, like, bug powers, you know? And, like, you're, you're... vision gets all full of like windshield splatter almost like the bugs are attacking you Mm. and uh i mean it's resident evil so like the assumption is that it'll be revealed that like they're weird like virus vampires somehow or like whatever but i i love that it's yeah leaning into this kind of horror people are trying to stay away from those viruses in resident evil and these gals are just (laughs) yeah they're just give me that (laughs) give me the blood um (laughs) give me the blood lord yeah, I I liked it. Like the the Baker family is kind of some like homegrown torture skills, whereas like these people are professionals. You know, like these are like Medieval. Mu- these are museum pieces here. You know, like these mm-hmm. are just, just like oh, that's horrifying and also fabulous. Um, but you brought the up an interesting with point. The uh, eye screws or whatever. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. And Didn't everything has like point. black goop all over it. Like like it's been used <laughs> so often that the blood is just turned into like bile. Yeah, it's nasty. I'm going to like the Tower of London <laughs> as a kid, or going to museums in London. And I'm just like, Daddy, how does that work? And it's like, Well, you sit in it, and your knees are up to your chest, and it's so painful you want to die. I'm like, Cool. <laughs> like, Ten years Eventually, old, like neat. you do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but you, you had expectations, Ben, going into mm. this demo, and that's interesting, mm-hmm. kind of where we are with Resident Evil, where it's like, What do we? I don't think this. I don't think <laughs> RE8 was ride or die on this demo, but we're still like super excited to play it. I think more so maybe than most games. I mean, like we went in oh, yeah. not only hoping for it in our reactions, but like expecting it. You know, it's like when is it going to happen? <laughs> you know, they did crashed PSN. It's like I can't get my free Resident Evil right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that like a good place for Capcom to be, or do you think there's kind of scary expectations there, or is this is anybody ride or die? You think on this demo, or is everyone just like I just want to play it today? I just want to get excited. Yeah, I mean, what what <clears throat> we'll talk about later, I'm assuming, but, uh, you know, it's it's this is kind of a repeat of what happened with Monster Hunter Rise, where, like, it was buckling the eShop, people trying to get the demo, and I think for any game company, having one of those is encouraging and a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> having two of those back-to-back, um, you know, and they're fair, they're releasing pretty much right next to each other yeah. as well. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're in good shape. That's that's the that's the chatter that comes in when someone like walks into a fancy party in this industry where they're like sipping, they're like, "Oh, his game buckled." I'm just like, "Oh, did it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. He crashed Steam for thirty seconds." Like, mm. <laughs> so yeah, let's. They crashed Stadia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they crashed Stadia. Not even Cyberpunk still. could crash Stadia. <laughs> it still crashed. Um, we got a lot of crazy characters. We think we've seen some of these people, but we're not exactly sure, but it's fun to speculate. Apologize again, just bail on this whole conversation if you're like, ah, you know, I don't want to hear about this stuff before launch. I can't stop thinking about it. Lady Dimitrescu, we've seen. She talks a lot. Uh, she's and that's got the name t- of the castle, too, apparently. It's the name of the castle. Yeah. She's got two daughters. And the wine brand? Ah. Three mm-hmm. daughters. 
three daughters. I say two. Sorry, yeah, she's got three. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, or it's like possibly one. I don't Who know knows? if if it's like a Dracula's <laughs> wives kind of thing. If they're like right, really right. her quote unquote daughters, or I think if that's they like might be brood. a bunch of bugs. They all kind of look the same, but yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think they might not be her actual daughters. Um, yeah, because maybe Mia's gonna be one of them, or maybe she was. She, hey, the more the merrier. You know, there's something going on with me and a baby that I don't know. Yeah, there's something um, I've been meaning to tell you. I'm a bunch of bugs. There's, to be honest, I'm surprised. Uh, there's Mother Miranda, which uh, Lady Demetrescu is on the phone with, mm. um, talking about her brother who may or may not be Heisenberg who may or may not be that guy with glasses those are three variables Lady Dimitrescu as a brother who's up to no good there's also fails a brother reference in the, in the dungeon campaign. too yeah. help me brother well I assumed I assumed that was the guy who was hung up in the other mm. cell but who knows oh maybe um, so yeah some interesting family relationships also kind of echoing of Seven just a very twisted uh, family also kind of reminds me I'm getting Code Veronica vibes from all of this. There's mm. a lot of, you know, huh. the, the mansion on the hill and that messed up family that's got a lot to sort out up there. And, see, you know, the voice acting is already much, much, much better than what we see in Code Veronica. Uh, and and the maiden, whoever the heck that is, who we are playing as. Uh, very mm-hmm. carefully, we don't see any hands, or at least I didn't my playthrough when the bolt cutters go. It's all mm. both hands no. are right off screen. Um, and then our protagonists, uh, Mia, who we mentioned briefly, but then Ethan Winters and maybe Chris Redfield. I don't know. Chris is up to no good, but who knows if that's him or a clone or if he's really helping people or not. Uh, I like on their website, Ethan's face is like grayed out. They're like, we don't show you Ethan. Like Ethan doesn't, Ethan's just hands. (laughs) Like he doesn't really. They said Ethan quite a a few times in the trailer. Uh, my, I have a feeling that Ethan may not end up being the one you play through this whole game as. Ooh. Just a guess, but who knows? Well, he also, the Duke, the merchant, mentions, like, well, everybody knows who you are. And so it's like, hmm, does he mean because of what he did before I bump into the Duke already in this campaign? Or because of what I did in Resident Evil 7? Or because I and Mia and our kid and all of this stuff is wrapped up in whatever their ceremony is? And so they've been talking about us forever. Um, I feel lots of prophecies are coming at us in this storyline, but um, yeah, I'm 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 curious, like what part of the game this even takes place in? Because I would, for some reason, I just have this picture that like, well, you would go through the village before you get to this castle, right? But mm-hmm. it, I don't know. Well, they they said that this is not part of the actual campaign. It's like, oh well, yeah, I know the demo prologue, itself, but the location. Oh, the location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can see plenty of, you know, and obviously not only seen these areas before, but like um, you can see little bits of the ladies floating around and gunplay and stuff like that, like in these hallways. So uh, it's a fun introduction. The architecture is always one of the fun things to explore. We'll talk about this Duke for a second. Ian, your eyes went wide when I mentioned the Duke. You lit up. He's great. Yeah. He talks a lot. It, it, I, 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 I instantly compared him to the merchant and then I realized like, <laughs> the merchant literally says howdy stranger and that's it like that is mm-hmm. all he says throughout the game and he's one of the what most beloved characters what are you buying in all what of resident saying? evil is this guy going to spoil us with actually having a personality and a script <laughs> or uh, i think it'll be the more the more the merrier the more the better you know yeah uh, i think i, I already... like the idea of of checking in and just having a, like a little bit of banter with him or have him reveal you know, or illuminate like things that maybe you just saw. Like I, I think that could be really fun. Yeah, and like they're definitely they're making choices with the guy. Like he's definitely like a big personality, and mm-hmm. he has the garlic hanging around him and stuff to like fend <laughs> off vampires theoretically. And like, yeah, oh, he's great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I like too that like his his carriage is just kind of like a jewelry box the way it opens up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And who knows? Maybe he's like a way bigger part of the story than it seems and yeah you know keeping tabs on you uh lots of upgrades there we can get into specifics in the campaign one thing that i am celebrating the briefcase is back yeah yeah what a stupid thing to be excited about but like (laughs) i'm so anal when i play games and just organizing all that stuff is so perfect but it also gives you a very simple restriction of what you can carry which Mm. some people might be frustrated by which i can't recall if RE7 has that. I think you have, like, your quick options if you want to, like, bring up weapons really quickly. But um, 
just the the option of like actually not being able to pick up a first aid kit or something because you're like I can't fit it into this briefcase. Uh, did you do you enjoy that in RE4, Ben? Or are you looking forward to that coming back? Yeah, it's funny because having played through all of RE7, I'm pretty sure that that is a thing where you you can you run out of space. You get capped. Okay, yeah, 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 I yeah. remember. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Maybe the games are just blurring together, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, but as far as like, yeah, I mean that that's that's a pretty essential thing for survival horror. I like specifically in RE4 that it's like, oh, okay, maybe this doesn't seem like it's going to fit, but then you rearrange it and you find space. That's kind of satisfying. And I think the other thing in RE4 is it's like you have to choose whether you want to spend, like where you want your upgrades to go. So it's yeah. like, do I want to make it the briefcase bigger or do I want to like put that into weapons or whatever? Um, so yeah, I think I, th- those decisions... Um, are really fun and I think also add to replayability and, and different ways that you can go in different play styles so I think it's cool much like kind of setting up your troops in a particular way in an RTS just the aesthetic of all the first aid sprays lined up in RE4 I was like mm, and what's funny about <laughs> RE4 is you get like a lot of goofy things like you you could put fish in there and eggs and, <laughs> yeah. and it's oh, not yeah, just eggs. weapons uh, speaking of goofiness we were talking about the Duke and he's a little silly like was there any humor in RE7? <laughs> like, I don't, like, other than, like, twisted humor. Like, obviously, like, there was a lot of cackling and, and and mm. you know, like, the beggars were sure having a swell time. But I, I, <laughs> I, I don't, it seems like they're getting back to the silliness a little bit. Maybe a little, like, the over-the-topness of RE4. And I, I can't remember if that's something I really missed or was, like, you know, obviously missing from RE7. Which is otherwise, like, Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about game. him is, though, you say silly, but I don't get the vibe of silly from i mean definitely more lighthearted, mm-hmm. definitely larger than life kind of a character um as are you know are the villains and uh the that one big guy with the hammer that they showed so there's definitely like just kind of like make things really big as part of um uh, the, the character design in this game um but yeah i didn't get quite to silly or b movie kind of vibes from mm-hmm. him just that he was just, you know, he's there. He's taking everything in stride. He's gonna make some coin. Yeah, but uh, but I do know what you're saying though, Jones. Like, there has been that kind of levity or or gaminess about the Resident Evil series that Seven seemed to step away from to some extent. Like, it's definitely one of the darkest entries in the series, and this one does seem to be stepping back a little from that and it really feels like a combination of four and seven yeah for real yeah and and that's with a little bit of one in there and two i kind of see what you're saying but i think i don't know i think the bakers sort of have some of that in them especially joe baker in the dlc (laughs) yes i feel like kind of kind of has what you're, you're describing um but as far as like relatively recent Resident Evil games like Revelations 2 definitely had that and in some cases I yeah. think went way too far like some of Moira's dialogue was like it, it, it just felt like it was trying too hard sometimes hmm. um, and so I don't know I hope they, they strike a good balance they seemed excited to say that I believe it was the executive producer that said I don't think it was the games director I think it was the producer that mentioned this was going to also be on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, which was something that they hadn't previously said when they announced the game. And I don't know if it's thanks to the last-gen version of Cyberpunk 2077, but, like, that might not be the good news people right. are waiting for to kick well, off 2021. How do you feel about that, Ben? To, to alleviate some of those fears, I think RE Engine has proven itself to be mm-hmm. pretty mm-hmm. scalable. Um, and I think one of the things walking away from the Monster Hunter Rise demo, uh, which also uses RE Engine, is that it runs well yeah. on that system, like relatively stable on that system. And so that's that's encouraging. And so I think I have a little bit more optimism uh, with RE8 and it kind of its performance on PS4 and Xbox One. One thing I think is actually interesting about that is is the fact that they, they've waited to confirm it, that they didn't just say that out the gate. So it kind of makes me feel like they've been working on it, but they, you know, they didn't want to say it if they couldn't do it 
kind of a thing you know yeah. it's like if this isn't going to be a quality product then let's just not even mention it with the, um, which is the opposite of CD Projekt Red, which couldn't do it and didn't want to say it. So it's just a, it's a question of what you want from your developer in terms of how they choose to approach last gen. This is pretty tinfoil hatty, but didn't they revealed Resident Evil 8 at a PlayStation 5 event, right? And you're getting a PS5 demo. So I wonder if there's like some oh, benefit sure. in making Resident Evil 8 seem mm. like a PlayStation 5 game for as long as possible to make... The PlayStation 5 even more enticing. The footage was people... PS5 in the presentation right. today. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Mm. Um, and we've seen different, we've seen Microsoft do uh, similar things as well. So, yeah, I wonder wonder if that has anything to do with it. Hey, what's a good test for console lighting is when you get into those super dark areas. So get to work, Digital Foundry. Get to work on that demo. Um, uh, and if you want, quote, immediate access to an especially challenging difficulty setting, you got to get that deluxe edition, which thank goodness for that fine print, because what, yeah. you know, it's, that was a sneaky one. We were one. ready to tear that apart. Yeah, yeah. To, show, to show us all these, we're like, oh, look at that Chris statue. That's kind of cool. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Like that, that took a second, which we're assuming to mean, you know, somebody you, mentioned you that the they game, did something, it, um, either they did the same thing or they did something uh, similar for Resident Evil 7. So it's not. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that at all. Okay. Yeah, I don't either. I just saw somebody mention it. I like that Chris Redfield has the pistol in his right hand in the statue, just like he does at the end of the debut trailer. So it's like, what if you could get, like, if you get the ultimate deluxe edition, it comes with a little Mia statue you can put right <laughs> on the floor next to him. <laughs> like, it's morbid. Yeah, it is. It's a morbid game. Um, but really, I mean, what are we doing spending this much time, almost the first half of this podcast, talking about Resident Evil Village, when we can talk about re our Everse? Our Evers. Our Evers. You want to say Reavers, Inclu but they all said mm. our Evers. Mm -hmm. Included with Resident Evil crazy. Village. You don't really know what you're going to get. Resident Evil is now like I a box of would... cereal. Like, you don't know. You might get a little <laughs> decoder pin at the end, at the bottom of it. Oh, thanks. I didn't order this, but sure. And a moose boosh. <laughs> I um, wish they would reverse this into a better idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's good. Uh, you start well, out as I mean, heroes, and then when you die, you turn into, like, tyrants and nemesis yeah. and stuff. So I guess if you still survive that without turning in, then it's like a win on top of a win, I guess, at the end. Um, what if we could get all of the characters together and make them look like their worst versions? <laughs> what if we can... Why, why a low frame rate. Why live in the current gen when you can live in the old gen? Um, yeah, this game... I don't anticipate that any of us will be living in this game very long. <laughs> No. Like, playing it very much. It's like, b before when I would see these things, I would wonder, like, what if it was planned to be a big thing? And then when they realize, ah, this isn't really coming together, well, we'll just make it free. And now, like, this is the bar that they have. Like, I think from the moment this was conceived, somebody came in with a render of Leon, and they were like, no, no, no. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> you know, what are we doing? What are these? Look at all these polygons. Don't be, don't be silly. We need to put, <laughs> you know, a, a comic grain on it. We need to put bold Borderlands lines on this. We need this to look like... You know, like, what did you say? A Switch screenshot or something? Or, like, what is yeah. going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Also worded very carefully, Resident Evil Village will include access to a free multiplayer experience. If it's on the desk, wait, free? What are you talking about? A free multiplayer experience? Oh, sure. If you buy it. Gain <laughs> access to, you need it to gain access, but it's free. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think they're sense. specifying because Resistance you could buy on its own. So they could don't you? want to confuse. I thought so. Can't remember. Wait, I thought you could. I don't know. I thought I just, it came with Resident Evil Three, but maybe it, you could it buy it on its did, own. It did, but I thought you could get it on its own too. But I maybe think you I'm could get crazy. the demo separately. But I think to get the full game, you had to buy Resident Evil Three. Mm, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, this is the this is the paragraph Huber doesn't want to write. Is what this is. This is the this is, he gets to the end of his review and then he's like, oh, I gotta say something about our Evers, don't I? Um, yeah, it's there. It's not, I'm not mad at it, you know. I guess it's the worst thing that this mode could do is lower the score. <laughs> you know, it's like actually have you be excited for the game and then you're upset because well, this I mean, is just even the in there. Situa yeah, just like with Resistance, like the situation is that this is an entirely different game. Yeah, it's this a different download. A I guess that's what. I guess that's this what This is they not mean. a multiplayer mode. Right. This is an entirely different. Like it's. Third person instead of first person is all a completely different group of characters. It's just, yeah, it's it, it's so strange. 
I just the way feel that like they decided to do these. I feel like when you have something like this, you at least want the response of like, oh, you know, this isn't really what I wanted, but it kind of seems intriguing. Like, oh, this is this is a neat idea. You know, I'll at least try it out. And it just what they showed looked so 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 rough <laughs> and so uninteresting. And it's just like, okay, I like. The division stuff looked more interesting than what you're showing, <laughs> yes. and this is an entire it, game. It actually yeah. does. Yeah, it is. It's it's amusing to me that we're so hot on Resident Evil Village and so not on everything else that they showed, but not like angry. You know, just kind of like, okay, you know, this Netflix show, like, eh, go <laughs> yeah. maybe check it out. Whatever. We're asking Huber like, how are those other ones? He's like, there's no way yeah. to tell. You never know. Um, <laughs> for a fra- because the thing that's interesting about Resident Evil that I was reminded of today is that I think it's one of those franchises where. The eight of us really converge, the eight allies, you know, almost all collectively, you know, and like that's that's a, that's a that's a thing to celebrate, you know, and it happens sometimes with games. But I think just in general, with Resident Evil, like we're all ready. You know, we're all like we're all excited. We'll all show up, you know, like the game you know, recognizes the game almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Time for Ben Moore to recognize Capcom. Ooh. As long as we're talking about them. Never done that before. Because, <laughs> and it, it, I'm sorry, Ben, during this conversation, I will utter the words Monster Hunter and Rise right next to each other. So I don't Oof. know if that's... Um, Got those codes, blood? Gets you a little too excited. Still is January. Oh, yeah. We're almost in February, and then it'll be... <laughs> he actually rolled his away. eyes. Blood did? <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Uh, Run the tape back. As if, if you weren't already excited for what Capcom's doing in 2021, Ben, they bumped up their full year sales forecast up 8.2% after mm. the sales of Resident Evil 3 and the pre-orders of Monster Hunter Rise, which are, quote, off to a promising start. Um, expecting maybe even more of those pre-orders before we finally get that game at the end of March on the 26th. Uh, specifically, they said it is a, quote, recent success in proactively growing digital sales, which is not a surprise that's happening to everybody in 2020, but really specifically to Capcom. And we talked recently about how much they were spending, that they were optimistic. They thought they were going to make $793 million in a full year. Uh, they are currently at, nearing the end of their Q3. We'll get the results next Thursday, actually. They now think it's going to be $890 million. So that's up $97 million. Where's that coming from? Anything off the top of your head? Where is that money coming from in the next quarter? If they just upped it? Is that all coming from? Yeah. Is that all coming from Monster Hunter I mean, Rise? I feel like it has to be. It has to be from that response. You know, like they've pre-orders, yeah. seen so many people downloading that demo and hitting that pre-order button. You know, like as annoying as it might be, like having that pre-order button at the end of a good demo. Yeah. It's a smart, smart move. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe this isn't even a blip, but... Monster Hunter World was part of the PS Plus collection, but I don't think Iceborne is. So maybe, hmm. you know, you've got people on PS5 trying out Monster Hunter World, and then, like, that's giving Iceborne an even longer tail. I have no idea. Just trying to think it through. Iceborne, and yeah. we've, seen, we've seen plenty of times in the past, like, uh, the re- reveal of a promising new entry in a series goes... Uh, Increases sales for the previous entry, so I, right. I wonder if a lot of people are buying RE7 now too. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's a, like a thing kind of on my backlog where I got that game started but never yeah. actually got all the way Same. through it. Yeah. Same. I had downloaded and put it on my PS5 actually, just like a couple of days ago. According to Capcom, Ben Iceborne has quote continual growth. So not just good sales from all those people who are signing up, but growth. Like more people are continuing to, to jump into Iceborne, or at least have been in the last couple quarters. Uh, I, I wonder, as somebody who's not as familiar with the franchise, I wonder about the relationship between Iceborne and Rise. If those just kind of mm-hmm. like, yeah, everybody wins. Or like, people are going to stop and play Rise and jump back. Or like, you now the, the Switch family is going to be over here and the PC, Xbox, PS5 family is going to be over here. Yeah. Um, is it a, a well, little they, bit of everything, or what do you think? They did it. I mean, <laughs> th- this sounds uh, a little bit hyperbolic, but I really think it's true. They, they did it just about perfectly, where, you know, if you look at the life, if you look from 2018 to where we are now, uh, they just pretty much continually updated Monster Hunter World, and they were constantly adding things. And it wasn't just like little things, there were so many crossovers, so many events. 
and that made it fun to stream and have people tune in like it you know I, it, of course it would rise and fall in popularity but there would be some big new thing to pay attention to pretty much like for two entire years um and you know more or less and i think what is happening right is you get people checking into games and they're like oh it was fun for the first month but the developers aren't haven't really been talking about it or updates have been slow like avengers is actually kind of going through that right now people oh, are just like upset it. oh you had to say i'm sorry it. people are just like <laughs> upset that okay, that yeah. The, the developers haven't really been communicating all that much. And of course, you know, we're in a pandemic and a lot is going on. But the point that I'm trying to make is I think, you know, it Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, like those packages on their own were good. And then it had like years worth of good content and it felt complete. You know, it felt like it capped it off. And so you have an audience that's been playing consistently, has seen everything, and now they're ready for the next thing. So it's not like you get to rise and it's like, oh, world was disappointing. Iceborne was disappointing. I, I didn't really like that. It's like, give me rise now. Like I'm so, like you've, you've kept me so full and satisfied that you know you kind of earn my goodwill right. into the next project. So Ben, yeah. I, oh sorry, Blood, were you gonna answer that? Um, yeah, I would just say that like, uh, but I think it also like it does benefit from kind of a combination effect because you do have those people that you know have been very heavily invested in Monster Hunter World, which was you know like just massive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's gone far beyond the like f fan base generally has been. Uh, but I do think that there is probably, you know, that especially in Japan, there's this segment of the fan base that isn't really playing on consoles as much and has mm. been sort of waiting. Um, and so now, like, you know, the Switch is going to kind of deliver, you know, that audience their their next game, which they haven't had for a couple of years. Um, and yeah, and so like both of those audiences are going to kind of be converging here. Right. So Ben primed for success. Yeah, go ahead. I this is not I Brandon Jones, just hypothetical consumer. So I've never really been mm -hmm. a big Monster Hunter guy. I get into Monster Hunter World and I fall in love. I'm losing my mind. This game is so exciting. World, uh, you're getting into World. world. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm playing with people, but I don't really have like a friend group. So like I, I jump in when I hear about updates, it's fun. I jump back in. Then Iceborne comes mm -hmm. along. I jump into Iceborne. I play like crazy for like a month, and then you know like I hear about the updates later, but I kind of back out and I play other things. And then Rise is coming up. I can ride on a dog. This looks amazing. You know I can I can you know zip line through the world like this looks really exciting i jump into rise i play that for a month and then i hear after that oh my goodness monster hunter stories two wings of ruin is gonna come oh, out yes i'm gonna love right, this right right do you stop that person from just immediately buying that game or do you think like oh they might they might dig it or do you have words of caution because that's q3 that's a part of their year um yeah i mean q3 it, it, of 2021 that i think will be the last quarter or that'll be the beginning of their next quarter is that going to do well for capcom well, I mean, I, it depends, I, I think, on what your expectations are, because it's it's a Monster Hunter spin-off game that, that is completely different in style and tone and mechanics than, than regular Monster Hunter. So if you go into Monster Hunter stories thinking like, oh, it's just going to be more Monster Hunter, which I doubt that would happen to anybody. But if you want to see a different take on Monster Hunter, I think you could definitely be into it. So again, it depends on what you want and what your, your expectations are, but... But I think I think there's a good point there, though, that if they are seeing, you know, much higher interest in Rise, mm -hmm. then, you know, they're, I'm sure their 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 team can project that Stories is going to get a boost from that as well. Right. All these numbers, too, must mean that RD3 did decent, which is like, what, do we have a 100% guarantee that something else is going to get remastered? I don't know if it's Code Veronica. I don't know if it's 1 again. I don't know if it's 4. I don't know if it's... I mean... I, why, why There's would been they? murmurs about 4 happening. Yeah. Um, they got I don't anime, think live 4 action, needs to happen as much as the what? others have, but... Yeah, there's well, definitely this, been talk. None of this needs to happen. Doesn't matter what Huber tells you. None of you know. <laughs> I will say, narratively, looking... <laughs> narratively, Code Veronica would make sense. Narratively, mm. sure. But I will say, from looking at Ben's money. playthrough of four, that like, it definitely feels like it needs more like contrast or darkness or some, mm. something there. Like it just it feels sort of washed out in a way. Hmm. Uh, that's 
you know, especially with this, you know, when you get it's it's super dark in in the dungeons and stuff. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean about lighting, but just playing RD4 on PC, mm-hmm. I was just like, this still looks pretty good. Yeah, and that could be nostalgia speaking. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, I remember the cabin sequence and just barely when you're looking through these windows and you can just kind of barely see the villagers start to kind of swarm in. You know, like they're out, out in the rain with the lightning. I remember that looking uh, looking pretty good at the time. That GameCube. Um, we also got Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection and Capcom Arcade Stadium. They're both in February. Arcade Stadium does not have a release date yet, which is interesting. Curious really curious if Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection gets any traction. Very, very curious. I'm sure yeah. Capcom is too. Yeah, because it's, it's a new game. We all thought it was a re- remaster at first, but it's not. A, it's a its own reboot new of thing, sorts, it, according to, like, right. you know, the Switch website. <laughs> or like Looks, their It's just website. this weird phone game-looking new one. Yeah. <laughs> just, well, right. and then the Arcade Classics thing is uh, interesting, too, because it's, it's not just, like, one collection. It's, like, this series of things, and so you can buy this piece or that piece or maybe get them all bundled together but yeah I, I i don't think that they're looking at those as being like anchors or anything like that i would be surprised if they're putting a lot on the ghosts and goblins thing yeah i think that capcom likes to i mean it's part of why i think they're successful is that they have these big huge tent poles and they fill in the gaps with these littler guys and they're just really good at that but lately. where's my mega man well, where is your Mega Man? What else could we get? You know, they're just wrapping up Q3. Right. They got one more quarter. So we got three months to make like f- over $400 million. Uh, is there something else maybe that could that could drop? I, I definitely think so. Yeah, I think we are going to get some big Capcom announcements this year. Like, Itsuno is obviously working on something, hopefully, probably Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Um, Woo! So yeah, I definitely think it could happen. And like it's it's except for reverse, like I definitely had a very negative reaction to reverse. But you know, Ghost of Goblins Resurrection, I'm not saying it'll be good, but I'm curious about it. I want to try it out. Um and boy, like Rise and Eight are just so soon. It's not like these are games that are coming out in twenty twenty two. I mean, this is the first half of this year. We've got some major Capcom stuff happening, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think that's something they've been doing pretty well is just their their scheduling you know that they are able to announce these games and then have them ready within the next year Mm -hmm. you know i I think that does you know kind of leave a hint that yeah they could still have something out before the end of this year that we don't know anything about yet you Mm -hmm. know even even with all the leaks and stuff that have happened like there could still be something in those coffers I uh, I was just doing some math that I think I did right because I was like four hundred million, RE eight and Rise can hit that no problem. How what is that like a couple of copies? But it's, you know, but it's just I, Rise. Uh, I divided uh, it by yeah. Unless unless you get I divided it by sixty for Village. I divided it by sixty and they'd have to sell six million six hundred sixty six six hundred sixty six copies. <laughs> so that seems hard. <laughs> six million. Let's say. I think so, unless I did the math wrong. Doesn't seem that many... bad. Yeah. I am not going to correct your math live yeah, at the end of the segment. Yeah, because million. Not yeah, happening. yeah, there we go. Yeah. Six million copies. Six point six million copies. At sixty dollars a piece. Why wouldn't you be confident? They just finished up their highest ever second quarter profits in six months. They made three hundred forty-three million, up twenty-one percent over the previous six months. They're killing it. So, yeah. Hopefully, they spend that money well. Yeah. We shall see. I mean, they, they've just been mostly consistent on quality. I just feel like they're generally making, like, one or more of the best games a year a lot of times or, you know, updating things that people really love. So I, I've been generally impressed with the quality. And I'm just, hey, I, I don't know if it's the mood. I don't know if it's my optimism for 2021. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think Resident Evil Village is going to be good. I think so. Do you think do you think it'll be so good that it'll be a serious game of the year contender? No, because I think it will also be goofy as hell. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think a lot of those big story beats are gonna be like, what? But entertaining, you betcha. Mm. 
Worth the price of admission, hell yeah. Uh, we'll scare you. Hey, I turned the corner in one point RE7, and there was a lady in a hallway in a wheelchair, and I d like, dropped my controller. I was like, ah! You know, it's like, <laughs> if RE7 could do that. Just find, still after all these years, find just really creepy, subtle ways to just like, gotcha. Good stuff. Even just that, God, even just the gameplay, man. Even just booting up that demo. It's, it's rough because the demo says Resident Evil Village. When you, it says Maiden in the title, yeah. but on the PS5, yeah. when you boot it up, right before you hit play, I'll just, I'll, it's just Chris Redfield and Resident Evil Village. I like, my heart skipped. I'm like, oh, that's right. I, was like, I thought that at first, too. I was like, they screwed up. I got the, the whole game. <laughs> to actually be. We did it. <laughs> we cracked the system. I need to do another playthrough of Resident Evil 7 right now. Uh, I'm going to do my first I did, I playthrough never did it before I started comes VR. Out. It was like, nope. But I Dude, don't know. Maybe first person horror is yeah, too scary I, for me. I don't know how you could do it in VR. Maybe I I don't know. Maybe my confidence is there after finishing Half Life Alex. Maybe I'm I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I defeated head crabs, even the metal ones, darn it. Maybe I'm ready for that. And now a word from our sponsor. How did you choose which internet service provider to use? The sad thing is, most of us have very little choice. I don't know, none of you in this panel have any thoughts on that whatsoever. <laughs> I will move <laughs> right along. Because ISPs <laughs> operate like monopolies in the regions they serve. They then use this monopoly power to take advantage of customers, data caps, streaming throttles, difficulty on the PlayStation Store, downloading the Resident Evil Village demo. The list goes on and on. But worst of all, many ISPs log your internet activity and sell that data to other big tech companies or advertisers. Advertisers. To prevent ISPs from seeing your internet activity, you can protect all of your devices with ExpressVPN. So what is ExpressVPN? It's a simple app for your computer or smartphone that encrypts all of your network data and tunnels it through a secure VPN server so that your ISP cannot see any of your activity. It's like Simon Pegg from Mission Impossible. It's like on the phone. Yeah. Ethan! He's Express VPN. He's pinging us off of Paris. Just think about how much of your life spiked them is on the internet. Sadly, every <laughs> site you visit, video you watch, or message you get gets tracked by ISPs or other tech giants. You can then sell your information for profit. That's the reason I recommend ExpressVPN is the best way to hide your online activity from your ISP. You just download the app, tap one button on your device, and you're protected. And ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by CNET and Wired. So stop handing over your personal data to ISPs and other tech giants who mine your activity and sell off your information. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust to keep us private online. Ian and I have both checked this out. We've, we, we've accessed other media browsers that we didn't necessarily have access to, depending on what region we're in. There's all sorts of fun things yeah. you can do with ExpressVPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash allies. That's expressvpn, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot -S -S com slash allies to get three extra months free. Go to expressvpn.com slash allies right now, Ethan, to learn more. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. Hate to say because we, we make those videos, you know? So when you say you watch the videos, they get your information. It's like, Please watch our videos, though. <laughs> Express VPN. I can help you with the rest of that. The European Union fined six companies for geoblocking. Does anybody know what geoblocking is that didn't look up this article today? Geoblocking. Oh, yeah. I know what geoblocking is. It's when is. Like, piece of the, pieces of the earth are being flung at you and you have to <laughs> block them. That's like Thanos. <laughs> geoblocks. Geoblock. <laughs> Um, yeah, I right. mean, You're this kind of thing will happen reason. on, uh, like, YouTube uh, copyright things, too, to where, like, there's songs, like, because you know how we have these things, where, like, you know, there's a song and a video or whatever, and, and because of a trailer that we reacted to, so we can't monetize it. Yeah. But, like, sometimes, like, people in the Netherlands won't be able to watch that video. Everybody yeah. else is fine. Right. Netherlands won't have it, so it's like... Uh, M music, so, yeah. yeah, music licensing is one of the more popular things outside of this news today. It was a bummer because I tried to Google, like, I, I need some other great opportunities of geoblocking. And Google was like, you mean these six people just got fined? It's like, yeah, I know about those. I just want to give me some other stories. Come on. Oh, yeah. But yeah, um, and then like Netflix, that's what we we're talking about with the yeah, yeah. with the ad that yeah, you can't get that in certain countries. And uh, Specifically in this case, it means forcing users in a country to only pay the local price for a game instead of a cheaper version in another country. Uh, they use geo-blocked Steam activation keys, bilateral licensing and distribution agreements. Those classic bilateral licensing and distribution agreements. 
this uh, affected Czechia, uh, Czechia, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. So all those people you saw in the Resident Evil 8 demo, they're not, you know, in Romania there. They're having issues with this. The EU Competition Executive Vice President Margaret Vestager said, Today's sanctions against the geo-blocking practices of these, six video, of these six video game companies serve as a reminder that under EU competition law, companies are prohibited from contractually restricting cross-border sales. Such practices derive European c- consumers of the benefits of the EU digital single market and of the opportunity to shop around for the most suitable offer in the EU. So they're looking out for a lot of countries, a lot of consumers. What were the companies? Who, who sounds like they'd do something like this? I remember Steam was one of them. Well, yeah, because you're Steam's asking, company, I assume yeah. it's people, big people. Valve, yeah, specifically. Valve, Sony. No, not Sony. <laughs> uh, EA? Ba- you would think. Or what? Sh- <laughs> what? Uh, Bandai Namco. Mm. Capcom. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay. <laughs> what is it? Focus Home. Uh, Coke Media and ZeniMax, aka Bethesda, which is not Microsoft's problem yet. <laughs> Thank- thankfully, Interesting. hopefully, they can fix their that practices. That sounds about right. Yep. Uh, the fines were I'm reduced. I'm just glad somebody's finally taken those bastards at focus down a peg. <laughs> yeah. They're not letting the bad bastards keep them down. At least if you're in <laughs> Poland, Hungary, and etc. The fines were reduced by 10 percent and 15 percent, owing to cooperation from the companies, except for one company. Who was it? Out of those that didn't cooperate was it was it coke no cinemax those bastards at focus <laughs> those focus bastards no <laughs> zenimax no valve yes bandai namco oh, it's valve okay valve. who apparently is infamously uncooperative in these matters uh they have since released surprised. a statement where they were like we cooperated so there's a bit of a it's <laughs> a bit of a back and forth they were just like they said we broke the law we were like no we didn't um, so there's a little fight, fight, fight. I love it. We did geo block. Uh, Come on, yeah, geo carried, so, right? <laughs> we geo <laughs> countered. We leveled up our skill tree. Yes, the old geo repost. Um, so Valve got that fine around two million dollars. The others you know, about one point eight, one point nine, uh, nine point five collectively. Uh, this stuff comes up, like, you know, Blood, you were familiar with it, and this stuff comes up on Love and Respect a lot. It's one of the things I love about having an international audience is they let us know, like, what the hell? I can't only, not only is this thing ridiculously overpriced in my country, but I can't get access to other things, or um, Alexander Syrianov was talking about how Russian prices are just, like, it's like two weeks later and everything's more expensive. Like, isn't that the opposite? Shouldn't stuff get cheaper yeah, what? after launch? Um, so I enjoy hearing about, about these things. Is is this something you think these companies are like legitimately surprised by, or are they just like, oh, we got caught? All right, okay, fine, we'll stop. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know on that level, but it's it's interesting in a way because it's it's one of these things to me that it seems so specific to how the EU works, you know, and like whether you're in or you're out. And so, you know, I I think that this is more or less how these companies are trying to operate you know, across the globe, you know, when they're dealing with different countries, like, okay, this is what the economy is like here. We're going to set our prices to be what, you know, seems like competitive in this country, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, with the EU, you've, you've got to treat that as, as one region and that's what they're being called out on. Um, but it is, it does seem strange to me that, that like, well, wouldn't, wouldn't you already know that? <laughs> like, wouldn't you already be prepared for that and have adjusted for that? But I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of in the dark on this one, to be honest. It, it's oh, there's really a, how, out to how, me. How do you yeah. not? You know, like that's not, I ain't going to pretend it's that kind of podcast. These are things I want to <laughs> talk about, but not clarifying anyway. Well, the, the way that these giant multinational corporations function is like, to, to, to use a, a, an analogy of a thing, I'm not even sure if it's true or not, but it, somebody told me one time that companies like UPS and, uh, you know, OnTrack, whoever, all the delivery companies – just have like an account with the police to pay parking fines because they get so many tickets that they just like whatever we'll just put it on the tab basically and like i don't know if that's real but i do think that it's real that companies like this have like a budgetary item for like lawsuits and fines because it just happens so much that they're all just like yeah 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 well you're, you're gonna get sued you know like so to them, two million as yeah, a 1. fine 9, is like, like, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever, yeah. Where do I sign? So uh, it's crazy to me. 
I also feel like as a general rule, they will try to get as away with as much as they can mm. until they can't anymore. So, I think that that's been proven time and time again in, in this country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, do you think other regions are going to be like, hey, wait a minute. You know, I'm not in the EU, but is this something the U.S. is going to crack down yeah. on? I mean, I think the, the difference is, is that, blocking these people? you know, there's, there's, you know, there is a law, there is a precedent for, you know, for them to say that, like, you, you can't do this. This is like, this mm-hmm. is how the, the EU works. This is how our market works. You know, whereas, yeah, there's no reason anyone else can say, it's like, oh, we, we deserve to have the price that they have. Like, there's, yeah, there's not really anything there other than, you know, right. the market itself to enforce that. Like, Australia can't be like, we should be able to buy this over here. Because it's like, that's a different country, you know? Yeah. Huh. Unions. Good right. stuff. Well, <laughs> it also obviously brings up the question of Brexit, which I, I want to take five minutes to briefly explain. I'm totally kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, <laughs> 2020's over, Jones. I, know, I, know. I will get into gaming investments, though. Mm, gaming investments. I know the Fuck ears yeah. perk up. I know somebody somebody listening in their car just, whoa, oh, okay. you said gaming investments, <laughs> Jones, and I got excited. Gaming <laughs> investments of 2020, no less. Put because the kids I know to something bed. That you, <laughs> I know something that, that obviously is going to mean big things going into 2021. Um, I mean, it's it's interesting. That here Here is just massive amounts of money being spent that will probably not really directly affect any of our daily lives or entertainment outlooks, you know, for the foreseeable future. And if it does, it's really hard to notice and look back on when stuff like that happens. You know, will Bethesda games become exclusive to Xbox? It's going to be a while, I think, before we really find out. But uh, according to Invest Game, which uh, I got to admit, my Invest Game is not quite where it could be. Gaming investments reached three thirty-three point six billion in two thousand twenty. Now. Now, you know, you just think like, oh, wow, the, the, you know, the $400 I spent on video games or the price I spent on my Xbox. This isn't people spending money on these things. These are big companies choosing to invest somehow in video games. And that's something that I don't report on a lot. That's something that happened. And was like, hey, look, these people got $200 million. Hey, look, these people got $8 million. Like people, indie developers coming together. This isn't like a Kickstarter GoFundMe situation. This is literally like having meetings, putting on a suit. Writing in a lot of elevators, lots of Zoom calls where you're like, please, 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 I made these other things. Give me money so I can make games. 664 transactions made up that 33.6 bill. Who's got the most? What country's leading? In video game investments. China? Yeah, seems like China right now. A lot of 10 cent investment happening. Yeah. USA! USA! Hmm. 36%, baby! Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm oh, sure yeah. that Microsoft deal was part of it. You're in second place, oh, yeah. China. 27%? Please. Please. You got to do better than that, Tencent. Tencent didn't even have the, the second or first best purchase of 2020. What was the <laughs> biggest purchase of 2020? You know what it is. Bethesda. Yeah, it's the Bethesda deal, right? Yeah. The Bethesda, right? Yeah. The, th- the, the Microsoft Zenimax deal is more than the second, third, and fourth place combined. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Microsoft bought ZeniMax covered it. for $7.5 billion. Uh, number two is Zynga, that sneaky Zynga. We keep talking about Tencent and you know EA and all this stuff. Zynga buying Peak Games for $1.8 bill. Uh, Tencent mm-hmm. bought Layu, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, for $1.3. And uh, EA, which has not finalized this deal, but is picking up that Code Masters, get out of here, take two. Um, yeah. For yeah. 1.2 yeah, bill. Yeah, take two formally withdrawed yeah. uh, last week, I think. So you got to at least have a bill if you're going to come in and, and buy stuff. So when we say we don't have the millions to buy what X thing, it's like the millions, please get out of here. <laughs> uh, we will, we will let you money. buy Easy Allies for a million dollars, though. If you, we're, 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 <laughs> in comparison, we're relatively Eight million. Ben, yeah, yeah, eight million. Ben, <laughs> ben, that holds up in court. Ben was just kidding. We didn't mean that. I'm cutting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm cutting. yeah. The reason why you... Upon, upon market valuation. The reason right. why you just didn't hear Ben during that portion of the podcast and it seemed like his audio clipped out, it was a technical mistake <laughs> that I recognize. It's that audio issue, Ben. you got to get that fixed. Where's the money? Where's the money? <laughs> we need more, more. transactions. Um, uh, something that I'm sure all of you are on the edge of your seat 
public offerings, not initial public offerings, of course, but public offerings, Thankfully. nearly yeah. grounded to a halt at mm. the opening of 2020. Doesn't seem like anything grounded to a halt financially in terms of video games in 2020. Everything was up, but people were nervous. That, of course, is when firms offer bonds or equity shares to investors in the open market. Doesn't mean when you, as an initial public offering, when someone's like, hey, get into your, you know, your, your E-Trade and go buy stocks from this. These are just bonds and equity shares. But uh, people were a little scared, I think, at the beginning of, or, or not, didn't realize the juicy video game year that we were about to have. And so that grinded to a halt. But by the end of the year, you know, it was up to 15.1 bill. So that was about half of the total gaming investment number. Um, but yeah, so that record year wrapped up. And, and folks, I believe, now that we have one more podcast for January, I think that's the last blank blank of 2020 segment that I will be doing on this podcast. <laughs> I think we're done. I think. I don't know about the, the projections of, of uh, 2021. We can maybe have another one of those. But um, it was that kind of a week. Speaking of. I'll have to, I'll have to look for some. Silly press releases. It might be time for some press release. Me. I think it is. I was going to message you the other day. I think it's uh, <laughs> next week might be the time to do that. But who knows? I knew Resident Evil is going to be a part of this podcast, but I wasn't sure what those other things. And then here we go. Capcom's feeling good. It seemed like those two things were worth talking about back to back. Also this week, Peter Moore. You remember Peter Moore, right? Oh, yeah. I do. That tattoo football loving Peter Moore. Dreamcast uh, Peter Moore. Previously, nice. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think Xbox, but now he's a Sega guy for a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, joined Unity as the senior vice president and GM of sports and live entertainment. He's a big fan of that live entertainment. Loves those big events. Yeah, that was a weird thing. And he's like, wait, Unity and the live entertainment? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't understand exactly what the role is, but sure. Maybe because they're not really known for their sports and live entertainment side of Unity, but maybe they're maybe they're going big. Uh, Tomonobu Itagaki, formerly of Koei Tecmo and Valhalla Game Studios, that made one game, either with Itagaki or, I don't know if they're going to be making more games, but he will not be making more games with them, because he made Itagaki games. And not just meaning games made by Itagaki. Itagaki, capital I, games, capital G. He's got his own studio, he's making something, no idea what that is. He said he would love to work with Microsoft again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it could be interesting. (laughs) He's like, if they they want to call... Wink. Yeah. So hopefully they call. He's like, I have a company. Yeah. It's up for sale. We're ready Microsoft. To go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Kojima Sony wink. Boop. Yeah. Call me. Uh, Dragonest is turning their hit game Auto Chess into a MOBA. Wait. Which is it's kind of like the producers' <laughs> movie going to Broadway. <laughs> it's like how Brandon- is what. <laughs> When I initially read this headline, my brain read it as Dragon Quest, and I was very confused. <laughs> right. oh. Dragon Nest, the thing, one end. The thing based on the <laughs> yeah. thing based on the thing is yeah. now going backwards to being a thing yep. that it was. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right. Dragon Nest. Yep. Love it. Yes. Um, it unfortunately is a little trickier than initially uh, projected to carry your Hitman 1 and 2 progress into 3. Uh, this is being reported on almost on the hour. Uh, look it up before you try it. There's some things that you should maybe know before you try to do that. Hitman 2 especially, that was trying tricky bringing in that progress. But uh, they were, Yeah, and they were talking about doing some crazy thing on PC for like Steam users to be able to import into the Epic version and all of that. I don't know where that's standing. That it's stuff just, is not yeah. working as intended. Maybe hold off, maybe just do the Hitman 3 stuff, uh, which is getting pretty good reviews Does that there. include... Issues with consoles, or is it only PC having issues? Uh, it again, it's, the board? It, honestly, there could be a new article as I say this right. on this podcast. Okay, right got now. it. So I would you look that stuff up for your most recent information before you just assume that all, all of that is going to work as advertised. Um, speaking of wonderful Japanese developers, Hironobu Sakaguchi and Mistwalker specifically have a new RPG coming out called Fantasian uh, mm. that'll be out this year. Have you? Have y'all seen this? Yeah, the, the it has a really really cool diorama look to it. It looks it looks very intriguing. Yeah. I, nice. No, I need to look this up. That is because they are making dioramas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this, yes, that's true. true. This, <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are building each one of these levels. So you think of something, you know, like um, Octopath Traveler, where you're like, oh, okay, I got my little town that goes over here to there, and then I got the little stores is I can this, walk into. They physically build those suckers, and then they is put. Is this what they were showing uh, off at the Apple Arcade it. thing? It is Apple Arcade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. And we're getting that this year. I love that Sakaguchi is so is so straightforward. I just love, you know, he's got such a great personality. Oh, you know what? I saw the photos of these dioramas and didn't realize yeah. what the heck I was looking at. Okay. okay, it feels like some kind of weird pre-order bonus or something. I'm like, that's the game. 
Uh, and I love that he's, so cool. he's, he's openly saying like, I'm a little scared. We're going to finish this thing. <laughs> you know, he's like, cause we got to build, we know what we got to build. We have this, the games written, but will we be able to, to finish all of those things together? Um, I love it. No. Yeah. This yeah, is great. See. Not this year. Everybody's, my guess. everybody's at home in their living room. Like, God damn. Um, puzzle quest three was announced. Uh, 505 bought the developer of puzzle quest three. Um, and that's going to be a free-to-play sequel. I love that puzzle quest. Um, I don't know how much time I'm going to be able to make for it, but um, 505 bottom for 4.5 mil and cashing in on that sucker. Uh, and um, we will that, see. That was like one of the OGs, man. Yeah. That was like right when like the casual game was starting to hit. Puzzle quest, first video game. Yeah. Not many know <laughs> that. Right right behind the, yeah, table for, t- uh, table, tennis for two was the first, and then it was Puzzle Quest. But I mean, it was like right around that time where like handheld games were transitioning over to mobile games, you know? Mm-hmm. Mobile games. Woo. Um, Takaya Imamura, the man who designed Tingle, among other things, but come on, the guy who designed Captain Tingle. Captain Falcon as well. Uh, is retiring from Nintendo. Shout out to him for all of his amazing work. Uh, a lot of really fun Nintendo stuff happening this week. Uh, it seems like every like month we get like a big Nintendo dump of just really fun classic information that we didn't know. Welcome to Nintendo Dump! <laughs> yeah. uh, a 20-minute B-roll clip surfaced on YouTube of Nintendo manufacturing in the 1990s. Specifically 90. If you want to see NES is getting built, if you want to see a lot of fun behind-the-scenes stuff. That's not all. Uh, uh, there is a CES... Uh, 1991 clip that I watched through today. Nice. Like th- that was fascinating because they were like talk, you know, like Game Boy was still new. They were talking about the Super Nintendo, but they weren't showing it. Um, they had a like. It was funny. They had like a part where like they had started an interview, but then like this stage show started in the booth, and so they kind of had to cut off the interview because it was too loud. And then you see all these people dancing around in front of like F1 race footage of Game Boy, and then. <laughs> It goes back to okay. Well, now we're gonna do the second half of the interview because it's just raw B-roll from like somebody at ABC's camera or something. It's just, it's craziness. That stuff is out there, man. Uh, in 1997 at Space World, people saw a crazy version of Zelda 64, and now a beta was discovered on a 64 cart that people are just ripping apart right now with all of these crazy things. Way too much to mention. And of course, the next episode of Friend Code, or I believe, is already recorded. Is that right? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. It's on Patreon. Ian right and now. I are on that. Um, yeah, to getting into that, so I don't want to get it's into It's weird, though, that we just talked about Xbox. You wouldn't um, think that would happen. Yeah, on it's it's true. Wild. Team 17 bought the rights to Blacklight Interactive's Golf With Your Friends for $14.5 million, if you're curious how much that I is worth. That. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's so funny to see something like that happen. And like, hey, we just played that. We just played it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, holds up. People are excited about it. Um, it's a good game. Yeah. But before 2022's The Callisto Protocol, which we're going to have to wait for a little bit, might get some more trailers this year, another, quote, PUBG-related game will launch in 2021. Okay. So the PUBG Pub- universe PUBG's... expanding at an exponential rate. Yeah, they're PUBG like Riot. A... Yeah, they just had a big uh, update for the main game as well. I don't know how much good. crossover there is between PUBG and Ty the Tasmanian <laughs> Tiger 2, but thanks to Kickstarter, Ty's getting an HD remake for that sequel. Wow. Um, which I guess has open world vibes. Like, please, I don't need more to play right now. Um, a new job listing for Ubisoft Dusseldorf is hinting at multiplayer in the Splinter Cell VR game. Mm. That Splinter Cell multiplayer That's can do a lot of stuff. Bizarre. Okay. And, you know. VR, Did you say Dusseldorf? Dusseldorf. 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 Where's that? That's right next to Gamescom. It's Cologne, yeah, and then you take the train up. I, I, do, I would do that for years. When that I would is... go cover Gamescom, I would go to, and hang out with friends at Dusseldorf for a week after. I really like that name. Like that, That's yeah. fun to say. Somebody's in a train station yeah. right now. That's like, oh, thank you, blood. Uh, Sony Santa Monica is seeking an art director for a new unannounced game, which I'm sure is not a big deal. You know? <laughs> I'm sure they don't need anyone for experience at Sony Santa Monica. Very low profile, unannounced game from the people who made God of War. Who cares? <laughs> God of War reverse. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> 15 frames a second of high octane comic book multiplayer action. But boy, is there nothing else to say about that? Because who heck, who knows what that could be? But. It's uh, we will in six years. They're making it, yeah, and it's unannounced. Uh, and according to Gabe Newell, uh, Valve has other games in development that they'll be announcing soon. Mm-hmm. Which was a prediction. And he specifically talked about like a taste for single player games. So yeah, 
Which I'm going to pat myself on the shoulder because that was a prediction in our prediction special. <laughs> it's like, is Valve going to make yeah, announce any good. other games this year? And boom, according to the, uh, like to the, the Gabe day. mouth. Apparently so. It's like finding like, an oasis in the desert. Finally, Valve. But an oasis the prodigal that, son has returned. But an oasis that from the distance looks like Portal in Half-Life 3, but when you get there, the water <laughs> is just blue beads and you can't actually drink them, so then you just die anyway. No, it's just, it's just digital cards and MOBAs. Yeah, it's just it, a It absolutely sounds game. like Half Life is part of this, so yeah, oh. definitely. Blood, you shut up. Did you read the article, man? He was, man, I don't he was know not how to shying read. away from it. it is I just want to play just, Portal. I just want more Half Life after Alex. Like, come on, man. Come yeah. on. Kick that door down. I, I, I honestly, it's from the sound of it, that's exactly how the developers felt. It's like, we need to make more of this. Yes, you do. It is now time. Portal. Uh, also, Portal would be great. Also, Portal. Would be also, great. Portal. Also, Portal would be great. It would be. Sorry, good. Jones. Seems, I had to do it. It seems like a strange. I had to do it. Seems like a strange thing. Like not. It's not like Portal was unsuccessful. You know, it's like it's not. Portal is largely successful. Yeah. And Portal keeps showing up in like Bridge Constructor and other weird things. Yeah. Like as a brand, yeah. they like it. They like to shop it around. They're still selling plushies, but we'll see if we get another. Boy, wouldn't that be hype. It is now time. Team Fortress and also Team Fortress. <laughs> For love and respect. <laughs> love, love and respect. respect. From Shane Olivier, Resident Evil 8 Village, really just called Resident Evil Village, was recently announced to be released on May 7th. My birthday. This is the first time I can recall that a game release I was really looking forward to aligned with my birthday. Birthdays as an adult can so often feel like just another day, but this has me anticipating the day more than I have in years. I was wondering, has this ever happened with any of your birthdays, whether in a game, movie, or anything else? Thanks for everything you do. Love and respect. Schmango. It has, but I can't remember off the top of my head I what don't game it was. Think, I don't think it launched on my birthday, but I remember the first time... I saw Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace was for my birthday, and like I, we got like most of the class or something to go, and we all saw Episode One for the first time together, and that was really sick. <laughs> but I don't think it was on the day of my birthday. Lots of lots of great stuff happen happens like a day or day or two after my birthday. Um, I don't know. Any t- my memory doesn't work like this, but anytime it happens, I always say on on a video, I go, "That's the day after my birthday," <laughs> yes. or something. Right. So go back through time, right. and you'll find it. But I don't remember this kind of stuff. I'm I'm digging through the the Game Informer lists because they do a good job of having the release dates up and see if I find anything recently. I don't think they came out on my birthday, but I had a fun t- uh, uh, tradition. Shout out to Tadashi Kitajima, who uh, introduced me to Final Fantasy VI. Uh, and we would always go see a Jackie Chan movie. For some reason, they were like always in the theaters in, in the month of my, my birth. And we would always go check out. It's like, first strike, let's do it. And like the two of us would go mm-hmm. and check out to celebrate my birthday. Anything, Blood? Should we wait? I haven't found anything in the last two years, but I, I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> he's, already, he's already gone through two years. Well, jump into the next Lynn Respect post. Um, and something really fun happened on my last birthday. What was it? Oh, Joe Biden got inaugurated. That was it. Oh, yeah, right. right that was right. a good one. You forget about these things so quickly. From Harrison Holt McHale, Hitman 3 came out this week. I got a close one. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Portal! Portal Uh, 3! Smash Bros. was the day after. Smash Bros. That's good. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday yesterday, Jones. Yay! (laughs) When we're taping this. Woo! A couple days ago, yeah. This week. Yeah. From Harrison Holt McHale. Hitman 3 came out this week. Woohoo! Something many publications have been mentioning is the Dartmoor assassination. This this goes places. Uh, this post, I mean. And it's wonderful <laughs> yeah. whodunit and Clue vibes. It got me thinking about all Whoa. the various editions of the board game Clue there have been over the years. Like The Simpsons, which I own. And The Game of Thrones, which which I also own, I think. Um, so much so that I decided to try and make a little game. I think I own Harry Potter. I don't think I own Game of Thrones. Um, I call it... We had Haunted Mansion Clue, and it's dope. I call it, and thank you for the super long name, Harrison Holt McHale, Kirby with the Gravity Hammer in Spencer Mansion. (laughs) What? I've thought up five editions of Clue Clue. based on a video game franchise or IP. Along with each of those editions, I've provided a list of six items related to that franchise or IP that one might find useful for murder. 
Jones will read down each list one by one. Your job is to guess the franchise using the least amount of clues possible. Note, I will be avoiding the use of franchise-specific words or objects using generic terms instead, so it's not glaringly obvious from the get-go what the answer is. Good luck and love and respect, Harrison. <clears throat> Game number one. Your objects are a fishing rod, a bunch of berries, a fossil, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. A bicycle. Oh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Who I think I think Ben Beach Ian impressive. But I think Ben Beach by like a second. Yeah, I think Ben beat him, yeah. Yeah. God. We also have a flute and a red and white ball right at the end there. Game number two. Ketchup. Animal Crossing. <laughs> a combat knife. Oh, um an arm. Mm. You said an arm? An arm. A bandana. Metal Gear Solid? Metal Gear Solid. Wow. Oh. I don't remember the ketchup. That's a uh, good one. Yeah, that's you. you uh, ketchup, you use to fake your death. In the, the Yeah, yeah, I was thinking I was Metal Gear say, Solid. You like yeah. put it on the, yeah, what? Yeah, it the guard comes in and sees it. Uh, also, a gas mask and a cardboard box. I don't know how you kill someone with yeah, a cardboard box. Yeah. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. Maybe you'd pop out from underneath it and strangle them. I guess that's how that murder would go. Uh, number three. <laughs> A BB gun. A jumpsuit. Earthbound. A suit of armor. Fallout. Oh. Nice. Yeah, Fallout. This game is wow. For, this game is for Ben. <laughs> also accepting a personal, a portable computer, a Geiger counter, and a bag yeah. of bottle caps. That would have done it. Yep. 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 Oh, would it have blood? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the idea. Uh, number four. A pistol. A knife. We're just playing Clue at this point. Yeah, this could be anything. <laughs> a gavel. A samurai spear. A statue of the thinker. This is uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, right? Bada-bing, bada-bing! Yeah. Uh, and finally, a samurai well done, spear, blood. like, that's the one that got me, yeah. Hey! Finally, a man yelling and pointing. Did you hear about, I guess there's a, a Reddit, somebody added a mod where you can type in, or it's just like software, you can type oh, yeah. in, like, Reddit articles, and it'll turn them into Phoenix Wright arguments. <laughs> uh, and finally, a sword, a bow, a Zelda? hammer. Yeah, it's all that. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> the easiest one for the last one. Come on, I should have shook these up. A boomerang, a mouse-shaped bomb, a hook and chain. Guess what? I did find I did find a, uh, a game released on my birthday, but it's kind of funny because it's like, does this count or not? Because it's the last Guardian released on my birthday. Uh, but I was already playing it before then because I did the review. Yeah, so it doesn't it, count then. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. So that you're telling me that that is the only reason you gave it five stars. <laughs> it's too easy. I, it's too easy. Uh, why? Why you might actually <laughs> thinking that the Legend of Zelda is also extremely easy is because that exists. There is a Legend of Zelda clue, and those are your items. Oh yeah. So, I believe oh. it. I'm doing that research. That's where that. That came was up. fun. More. That was fun. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> those were good. Good game. Shout out to everybody who gave us games this week. But that was just that was too good. Um. Uh, also another fun game, but we'll get to that in a second. From Rahul Misal, I live about two minutes from the Microsoft and Nintendo campuses, and therefore, my brother and I have always been Nintendo and Xbox fans. I love the fanboy from a geographical standpoint. Yeah. I j it just rubbed off on me. I was something in the air. Especially since our parents' friends got us into the corporate stores. Oh, nice. Yes, Nintendo store is fantastic. Nice. Must be nice. Yeah. Gran Turismo 6 was also released on my birthday, but also damn, a game I reviewed. Will you, oh my God, well, you pay attention, damn it. I need you guys. <laughs> this is, you're, 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 you're taking your co-moderating duties in, in, a, in, a, in a wrong direction. I need to pull you back in, okay? Poor they asked a question. I had to find an answer. <laughs> this is why you did so poorly in, you know, in the, the Clue game. You weren't even paying attention to the Clue game. I got another game coming up after this, and I need you to focus. Especially for Rahul. He's got a question for us. But this year, initially, just because of Spider-Man, I got a PS5. Doesn't say if it was her first Sony console, but I don't know. I'd like to think so. My question is, since I've missed out on so many PlayStation exclusives over the last decade plus, which games do you recommend I get and play? Uh-oh, Ben. Ben went green. Oh, I went green? <laughs> Why did I go green? No, I, green. This happened, this I, happened to... And not in the Earth-friendly way you're thinking of. <laughs> Wait, you <laughs> both see him as green? He looks I'm, normal yeah. to me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm normal said to me. Said I look, Here, let me see Domiani if I can refresh said it. I look green to him earlier, too. Is it still green? Does no, he look, fixed. Oh, it's fixed now. Okay. My Zoom, Zoom got everybody going up, grainy a little while ago, but But otherwise. you swapped with blood. What an exciting love and respect we're having here. This is just a... Portal 3! What are good PlayStation exclusives? 
Oh, Bloodborne. I mean, uh, yeah. The, t- <laughs> uh, uh, you got that Uncharted collection, which is great. Yeah, that, and, and don't skip on more. Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy might be a fun well, place to start, actually. I'll tell you what, if you got a PS5, if you have PSN, uh, they've done a lot of this heavy lifting for us yeah. and for you, because the PSN collection yeah. is free, bundled in for you. PlayStation Plus um, collection, yeah. I yeah, think it's great. All of those are winners. I think Spider Man is a must play. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, I don't. Rem- did one of you already say God of War? But God, God of sure. War. I was just Absolutely. about to. Uh, dreams. Get in on that dreams because there's a lot of good stuff in there. Ratchet and Clank. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ghost uh, of Bl- Tsushima. Bloodborne. <laughs> get near the end of Ghost. Oh boy, it's getting good. I mean, it's been and good, Demon's but Souls. it's getting. Yeah. Stakes. Demon Souls. It's the new Demon Souls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, chip. It'll be a good year. The Resident Evil 8 demo <laughs> came out recently. You already you spoiled all of yeah. it. God. I mean, hey. Sony has just had such an incredible generation for exclusives. Oh, dude. The, it's hard if, to go wrong. If they're talking about decades back, then get that Shadow of the Colossus remake. Oh, yeah. Get well, the progress. remake isn't decades back, but I get what you're saying. But they can't play the original on right, the PS5. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. But you got to play that one. And, uh... Metal Gear Solid 3 was not exclusive. But, but is it on the PS5 was, in it? any way? Nah, it's just sweet. Metal Gear Solid 4 <laughs> is still exclusive, though, to the PS3. Ah. But you should play the other ones before you play 4. Pl- don't yeah, don't start on yeah. 4. Don't even yeah. try to start <laughs> on 4. My yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be confused. You can't start on 5, though. Well, the thing is, you'll be confused regardless, but you'll, well, <laughs> you'll get more out of it. If you, you won't have any You pain. probably you will be really bored five. with 4 if that's the phone you start Yeah, with. I think yeah. you would. You would hey, you can watch it. the Metal Gear Solid retrospective video because that was before 4. <laughs> that was leading up to uh-huh. it. So, yeah. The game trailer is Metal Gear Solid retrospective. I tell you, it's all you need to know, really. I summed it up expertly. <laughs> Didn't Damiani write it? Quiet. Who? What? I edited <laughs> Portal 3? What? <laughs> Portal. <laughs> From G the Finger, it's time for another round of Either Or, the game where you must differentiate video game trivia from seemingly irrelevant topics. Below are 10 features, <laughs> uh-huh. and for each one, I want you to tell me if it can be associated with the... This is like, I get to, I get to be my Cookie Masterson just for a little bit. For each one, I want you to tell me if it can be associated with the Xbox, Xbox Elite <laughs> Controller Series 2 or the Chic Quattro for Women Trim Style Razor and Bikini Trimmer. Or both. How did I have you a lot think of knowledge this? about that. Or both. <laughs> so it's either the or Xbox both. Elite Controller Series 2 or the Chic Quattro for Women Trim Style Razor and Bikini Trimmer. I have so, both of these things. So, so you're three. Yep, right? I'm looking for you to, to strike. <laughs> Blood's still looking up, you know, video game release years. So yeah. I need you back. Nah, I, I, I need stop. you. Okay. Phew. So I need your three available <laughs> answers are Xbox, Chic, or both. Okay. Okay. Ergonomically designed. Both. Both. Shick. Just shick. Uh, the Xbox is there's it's not definitive. You know, some people have Get problems with it. But where is this description at? What are we looking at? Is that on box or something? Uh if it can be associated, yeah. So I guess this is from their official press materials. I mean, because it can definitely be associated with ergonomically designed. Somebody said that at some point. At Microsoft, you think? In official in official I'm sure. it's ergonomic. check your email. Yeah. 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 All right. My hands are right on it. <laughs> Charging carrying case. Charging Shit. carrying case. case. Carrying the case is what makes it weird because there's yeah, a charger charging for the, the, the carrying case. The 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 case. Yeah, it's just chic, the chic. Chic, yeah. Just Xbox apparently, according to G the Finger. Oh. The charging fuck? carrying case. Is that maybe that's something that you can buy? The Xbox Elite oh. controller series two. The Elite. Yeah. Oh, the Elite. Oh. I have I have the Elite yeah. series two, and I don't. <laughs> I don't think I have a. You need to spend another five hundred dollars. Yeah, case. it's the maybe, whole maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. You maybe. Maybe I should delu- look into that. Get the charging case. Maybe the I deluxe edition. Like, I thought you were a gamer. Rise up, dude. Wrap around dude, rubberized grip. <laughs> What's that? Wrap around rubberized grip. Shit. Both. 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 <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Replaceable AAA batteries. Uh, oh, shick. that's the razor, yeah. Shick. That would be just that razor. You got to yeah. get the double A's. You charge the... Yeah. Internal so. motors. Oh, both of them, for sure. Both, both yeah. Well, both. Because you already nodded. So yeah, this both. seems right. Yeah. Because <laughs> you already nodded. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, both. Lasts Rise up. 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Lasts 40 hours on a single charge. Mm. Both. 
the uh, Elite Series 2 has a really good battery life. I'm just going to say just Xbox. I'm going to go with the controller. Uh, yeah. Shavers are always saying that they last for a long time. Uh, 40 hours Xbox. That's that's pretty yeah. good. No, it's a uh, it's quite a. I have yeah. it right here. It's quite a good controller. I like it a lot. That's more than the PS5 controller. I that use is it on PC. Sure. Three adjustable tension settings. Just the controller. That's the controller. Just the controller. Yeah. I'm Both. A, I'm a, yeah. <laughs> Both. 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 Yeah. Huh. <laughs> What? I guess for the head bending back on the razor? Yeah, I don't know. There's only three of them, though. Uh, water and sweat resistant. <laughs> That's Both. the razor. Both. <laughs> no. Just the razor. Yeah, I'm going to change my answer. There's I'm gonna no change way just, the, the, no, no, no. the Elite controller no, 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 no. is water resistant. I'm going to say just but the razor. why would they say sweat resistant on the razor? Apparently, you don't sweat when you play video games. Specifically, Xbox. Yeah, Nothing makes me sweat like Xbox. i got to be honest. <sighs> let's sweat Xbox. That's just yeah. Let's just the shick. Uh, and finally, and ending on a difficult note, ranks twenty seventh in bikini trimmers on Amazon. <laughs> controller. <laughs> controller. Just controller. Nah, yeah, it's just the Xbox. Nah, it's just. Shick. All right. Uh, finally, from Dark Pikachu. Hi, allies. Here's a game you're probably not gonna play. Ha ha. That's a that's bait. Eat it, Dark Pikachu. How many allies? I just looked up all of your names on the website. How many of me? They use data from the U.S. Census Bureau's 1990 and 2000 censuses mm. and roughly estimate how many people in the U.S. are called whatever. Oh, my gosh. So let's, let's rattle off each of the allies. Let me know how many of them are in the world. Just projected. None of this is equal, but they are specific numbers. They don't round these things. How many Ben Moores are there? There are a lot of Ben Moores. I well, how, can what's say a lot? That how many? Like too many. Uh... Just in the US. I don't know, like in the whole world, just in the U.S. or in America? Oh, just US the U.S. Census Bureau. Yep. Like, yep. I don't know, three million, two, two million, one million, one point five Whoa. million. Whoa, Ben, calm down. Ben, <laughs> easy. You know, um, three hundred million. You could amass an is, is army of Ben, ben Morris, but I'm right now. We're like all guessing. A, we're all is guessing. Is it like? Right? Is it like three hundred thousand? I don't know. You, you are out of control right now. <laughs> I would like probably 2, go 000? with like 97,500 or something like that. 336. Oh. Yeah. In the U.S. That's it? Called Ben Wait. Moore. You Only 336? Get, I feel like there are a lot of Ben Moores. Maybe I'm wrong. According to, to the a, a conglomeration of the 1990 and 2000 censuses. So who knows? Okay. This huh. doesn't mean anything. These are silly numbers. But now you got a, now you got a baseline. Okay. If Ben Moore equals no, no, 336. Now I've got no baseline. I've got no idea. Well, if I throw a curveball, something, something scintillating like a Don Casanova. How many Don Casanovas are there? 82. 30,000. <laughs> 56. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That could be a really? just a faction. Yeah, there could be a there could be a samurai group of just Don Casanovas. How many Michael Hubers are there? Uh, Twenty three. A hundred thousand. There's no. You realize that there were only three hundred Ben Moores, right? Ben? <laughs> Wait, I thought he said three hundred thirty thousand or something. No, no I, I thought he said three hundred thousand. Oh, you just said three hundred? Three hundred thirty six Ben Moores. He's just, oh. I keep, Ben literally just <laughs> imagine like a sea of Ben Moore. Like, just, <laughs> I, 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 they're all just army, man. His, his image. They're all just like Team Four. We Trump. have to go stop the separatists. It, there's only 336. <laughs> That's a high school reunion at best, Ben. I'm sorry. It's just not, I really, not truly quite, believe that you, you said 300,000. It's not really quite. There were 700 in my graduating class. I went to a massive high school. Yeah, there were Way 70 too. in mine. Yeah. Uh, uh, 100, Michael Hubers. Uh, 599. Almost, almost 600. 599. Ooh. Wow, more than Ben Moore's. Yep. Uh, how many oh. Michael Damianis? I want. Let, Ooh, let, let's let's many. have all of the armies fight each other. Yeah. So six hundred at Huber was our biggest number so far. How many Damianis? Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah around there. Like Here we go. Fourteen. Twenty. Oh, okay. Ben's closest with twenty nine. Hmm. Oh. How many Daniel Bloodworths? One. One. No, no definitely not. Mm. Uh, let's say thirty five. Twelve. One and a half. <laughs> uh, 25. Is that a bad? Not bad. How many really? Bradley Ellisons? I, I want to see the other. Uh, 300. 200. That would be a high 15. one, I think. Mm, 400. 179. Yeah, more than Ben Moore, probably. 179. 
179. Okay. Hmm. How many Brandon Joneses? Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. 800. Oh, yeah. 5,000. 1,200. Two. <laughs> I'll find him. <laughs> there can be only one. 2,205. Oh, wow. Whoa. Okay. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah. I we're was all, so wrong about how many gate. Ben Moores there were. We're Holy all going to see us on horseback riding toward your castle of a paltry 25. If I'm in double digits, I'm going to be pissed. Yep. I'm taking you over. How many Ian Hanks? Two. Because I, uh, I don't know of anyone else with that last name that I've... I think it's four, like two or three. 45. Maybe. Ian. You're it. I'll maybe. go with 15. Well, how many? I'm it. You're it. <laughs> I'm it. Woo! That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, this does deserve a <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> There's somebody listening to this podcast named Ian Hick who's like, wait, what? <laughs> Woohoo! Do I even exist? I think I do yeah, think I'm sure, I'm sure I do is. think I've seen like another one when I've Googled stuff. No. Like there's there's one or two others maybe in America. Not many. There might be one in Germany too, but not many. <laughs> you can come to the Jones clan if you want. If you need protection. <laughs> For any we, we have room. <laughs> oh, yeah, no thanks. The other thing is, is this We're is based on census. Tower. Right. It's, it's dealing with people who are alive. <laughs> right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, back to the future. <laughs> the, the snap. <laughs> it is time for bets. Next week's bet, the medium launches next Thursday, a.k.a. the day we record the podcast. I am hoping that on that day when it launches, we will know how long the end credits are. What's that TRT going to be? We might not know. I might have to push this bet. We'll see. But I think we'll know. I think we'll be able to dig it up. Ian, you sexy beast. Hey. How long are they going to be? Quite literally. Uh, six minutes. Oh, some long credits there. Uh, ben. How long? Six minutes. Oh, come on. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> six, six, six. Oh, Bloodworth, what's your score? Tell me it's a big <laughs> number, please. Please. Eight seventeen. Okay, okay. The number of the devil. <laughs> Bloodworth, how dare you? Oh, this is gonna be a weird bet. God, if it's five minutes and fifteen seconds, I'm gonna be so pissed. I said two forty. Uh, so we'll see. Oh no, they bet this. Mm. That's bad, isn't it? To bet the same thing. No, well, you both good. get points if you're the if you're oh, the closest. Yeah, you both win. Oh. That's two points. Just to to start the year. That's the. That's not a good omen, what? Last week's bet. Uh, I want to know what the release date of Resident Evil Village was, and if they didn't get one, anyone that said there would be none would win. Everybody bet a date, and they gave us a date. Brad Ellis bet April 16th. Ben Moore bet April 15th. I bet or Blood bought it, bet October 1st, and I bet September 30th. Ian, we all <laughs> bet the two teams bet dates right next to each yeah. other. Uh, Way over. That's... Some of that witchcraft Ian clearly loves to practice if you're visually watching this podcast. If you checked out that showcase, you already know who won this bet. That would not be Ben Moore. Brad beat him by a day. But that would be that team that got that point, <laughs> evening out the score. Which brings our scores to Jovial Penguins 1. <laughs> you lousy minx, I ought to have you spayed. Vociferous Beavers 1. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. So you did change your names. <laughs> We are the vociferous beavers. Love it. Yep. I think maybe Damiani doesn't know about it. I think he's maybe the last one that has to <laughs> is going to find out what our and team never is. Tell him. I've heard never he's tell him. He's not going to do the research. Never tell him. Never tell him. Yeah, I'll be like, vociferous beavers. And then blood now goes, <laughs> 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 like, what, are, what are you, who's doing that? Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. That is where you would like to go. That is where you would like to go. You would. I'm putting, I'm <laughs> putting that like inception. Yeah. I'm putting that thought inside your head. I'm Leo at the bar right now. I'm noticing. You haven't been to patreon.com slash easy allies. Your life depends on going there. It's where you can go to learn more about the easy allies. Uh, For all sorts of reasons, there are things that we just only post on that website. There's lots of fun exclusives. Uh, I was very glad to work on the spoiler mode. Didn't spoil me on the season of season three of uh, Cobra Kai, but even just their promo, even just listening to how they talked about it. I've just been I'm so tempted to go back and check those three. Uh, seasons. They're talking about season four, talking about details that could potentially happen. Um, we did a spoiler mode in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, and we will have more spoilers uh, to talk about in that specific spoiler mode series. Sh- should also say that today, uh, Patreon exclusive, 
right now, Jen, that was 2018. Very fun episode. Yes. It's a good one. Uh, also, that WandaVision. I think that's primed for a spoiler mode whenever that oh sucker wraps up. I really like WandaVision a lot. Uh, we I need to be like a forensic about detective to you do, talk dude. about that show. I mean, who knows? Maybe in the you last episode, they'll just things. dump everything on us. The devil's yeah. in the details. I thought following the MCU as, as, as tightly as I did, I would be clued. But like, I'm reading articles like, who? Who are you talking about? Um, yeah. For those sp- specific spoilers and other spoiler modes, check out patreon.com slash allies. And we would greatly appreciate your support because that is where we are primarily funded here in this operation of ours. No more primarily funded than the five wonderful people I'm about to shout out. Ian, because you started the Zoom call, you are number one. I followed right behind you. Bloodworth, you're after me. And Ben, you are going last. Shout out to Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Stephen Thomason, and Nick. Shout, Shout out. out. Shout out. Shout out. Well, Brad won it, but Brad ain't here. Ian, you're in that box. Woo! You get to close out this podcast. You get to promote any Easy Allies video you would like to promote. Get the final word on anything you've disagreed with, want to reiterate, or just popped into your uh, head with the horns. Your horned head, I meant to say, quickly. Oh, yeah. And you get to sign off with your trademark sign-up. He's got horns, everybody. You should watch the podcast sometimes. <laughs> uh, shoot, what should I... I mean, what I want to promote is our goatee stuff. Uh, it's coming. But that won't be up yet. Hmm. Get excited. Um, but yeah, Some people might not listen our... to listen Sunday. They might be like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing anything the day after tomorrow. I'll tune in. Yeah, Tuesday, our goatee stuff's happening, so check that out. Um, yeah, I guess that's my promotion. Final word. That's an exciting promotion. <laughs> that's, whew. <laughs> yeah, watch our goatee stuff. Well, what else, what's better? What should, I, what should I promote? No, it's not a better thing to promote. Well, you, but you, you gotta, do I mean, it won't promotion. be up for early access These yet, awards, but you got a thing baby. this weekend. We're hitting up best trailer. My, my easy update? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I talked to one of the lead designers, the lead designer of the Stronghold series, um, on this weekend's Easy Update, and it was a lovely time. Check it out. We talked about the series and the upcoming Warlords. Um, I didn't have a final word, and I pitched two things, so I guess I'll just say good night and good game. Fifteen frames a second of high octane comic book multiplayer action. I wish they would reverse this into a better idea.